Thanks for stopping by again. It's great to see you. It is April 12, 2020, and we have a treat for you. We went on a pseudo road trip to go magnet fishing and regular fishing with live worms. And yes, I'm teasing some of you. Some of you know that my other channel, the theme song for almost the whole time for the beginning was Live Worms. I just love this song. For those of you who've never met him, this is my friend from high school. We've known each other for a long time, Pyre Media. And he got that name because he just as soon burned down the mainstream media as pay attention. Let's jump right into this. We're chit-chatting and I tell him that I am getting well out of the way because my dad years ago hooked me with a fly fishing hook right in the cheek. Rod hold either. Well how prepared are you? Very, I guess. Not very at all. You got a big old and a big old tackle box and rods and a bucket and whatnot. And no rod holder? Wow. All right, so the actual big fat worm is in the water. And now, I guess I'm going to have to take this out of its holder temporarily. Now we're going to throw the magnet in. All right, it's time for me to get rid of the extra lens protector as much as I don't want to. We're discussing the fact that the rod with the worm on it should have a bell on it while we magnet fish. This is what my dad would do. Not very often, because usually he had the rod in his hand, but... So what you're saying is the fishing boxes are no more organized than the garage. And the response was maybe. I had to mute this clip because the wind and the trucks and cars right behind us were uh, blowing my ears out and they're probably blowing your ears out as well. I apologize for that. You know, we're, we're working with minimal equipment here, but I do want to let you know that while we were out fishing, both magnet fishing and fishing with live worms, I also was testing a chest rig. Um, it's a way to stabilize a little bit since I can't afford a gimbal it's a way to stabilize the camera and give me hands-free. And I have to tell you, if you're going to go hiking with me, I got to have hands-free. I just can't stand um, the having to hold the camera, I quickly found out. I think the reason for that is I found that I was too distracted by the position of the camera and trying to stabilize it with my arm. And the chest rig, as you will see later on, is a little better. There was a power boat out yesterday blowing the gunk out. Uh, yeah, just about this time, maybe a little bit later. First one, not the first boat on the lake, but the first one out there, you know, doing a shakedown run. So that was pretty cool. And it's a boat I haven't seen before. Once that line goes in the water, I can't really see anything in the sun. Which is why I do like polarizing lenses so much. Because I can't see a thing.
Nothing. So you're saying this is magnetic sand? Yeah, and it gets a little bit interesting that. It's not it's just dripping, it's else. grabbing it. It's actually magnetic. Well, but we do have, you know, we are known for our our water that's like a brick, you know. Some of that yeah. is... Yeah. All right, you ready to launch? As you can see, we weren't having much luck, so we went to the other side. And while we were on the other side of that road on the opposite side of the bridge, uh, Pyre Media worked his way down and practiced good social distancing by dragging the magnet along the river, well, it's actually a lake, the lake bottom. And we found out to our surprise that that lake bottom is not rocky like we thought it might be. It's not even really um, got a lot of pebbles. It's pretty sandy. And we kept pulling up that magnetized sand because our state is has a high iron content. And, you know, on we went. I did a 360 around the lake to the opposite view, and I'll pop in a couple of photos that I have that I took while we were looking. That's where we were, down by that light pole. And then this little part that I just blue by I'm going to insert salty McBoat face and LA detailing this little two still clip is for you that um, willow bank is the outcropping and you'll hear us discussing a house that is on that property later and then that boat looks to be about the size of my dad's boat. A 27-foot Sea Sprite single mass fixed keel. Ours was red to the waterline and then white top. My dad, I have to give him tons of credit. His craftsmanship was outstanding on that boat. Everything was teak. Everything was, you know, quadruple times 10 shellacked or lacquered and it really when he was done with it it was a beautiful boat i still hated that boat but that's a story for another day fire media kept working his way down towards the other end of the bridge and then this happened i don't think i caught it so it doesn't matter Oh, that wire. You mean the power wire. Well, that's pretty awesome. And wouldn't you know it, right at that moment, that truck went by, and it was not a softly muffled truck. So, fiddling with the um, poor worm who's, you know, going to dehydrate out there, in the sun, we had to cut the line and lose the weight. Dehydrate there in the sun. These are the joys of fishing. Now I know you're going to be mad at me for this, and I'm sorry, but we're already at nine minutes, and it's going to take a long time to upload. So I will release part two on Sunday so that you can watch them back to back. We did have a little more excitement. Thanks so much for stopping by. I'll see you in the next episode. Take care. Have some fun with your family this weekend. See you soon.